All right, everybody. So, uh, hello and uh, welcome to um, what I'm hoping is going to be a new short little series on um, on Elisp. Um, this is something a few people suggested a few years ago when I was still doing my um, Emacs videos, and uh, now I've got a little time, so I think uh, why not? Uh, so, this video is going to be pretty short. It's just going to be a little bit of an overview, take a look at what Elisp is at a very basic user level. Um, the whole goal here is to be able to get somebody who's new to Elisp, the whole series, um, new to Elisp to be able to do some things with it that could be useful to them. Um, it's not going to be a programming, you know, like, like a programming tutorial from scratch, even though I hope to make it pretty accessible. Um, it's not going to be uh, super advanced because, to be honest, I'm not an Elisp pro. You know, I know enough to get by and to figure things out, but but it really, um, yeah, you know, um, it's pretty low down on the list of languages that I am good at, <laughs> you know. Um, but but I'm hoping that uh, that I can share some useful stuff. Um, this first video, as I said, will be a little short. It'll also be a little disjoint because um, it's just to show you some things. But the future videos are going to be a little bit more structured, where we're going to build some very specific things that could be useful. A um, couple of things I have in mind, um, uh, something that will convert between camel case and snake case, um, something that will um, we'll use an online service to be um, a synonym finder. Um, that would be a couple of things. Uh, something to do um, maybe some help for creating documentation for your code in the comments. Um, and all within you know, the context of uh, teaching you in a general way uh, to write your own ELISP to you know, get Emacs to do what you want it to do. So, um, so yeah, let's get started. So what is ELISP? Um, ELISP is a Lisp dialect, and Lisp is a programming language. Um, and it's specifically the language that, um, that is used within Emacs. Um, Emacs, a lot of people describe it as an operating system that can do editing, um, you know, or this environment that, you know, um, but it's also described as an ELISP interpreter that happens to you know, have an editor on top of it, and that, that's kind of, kind of accurate in a way, um, in that Emacs um, and ELISP are very closely intertwined, and pretty much everything you're doing, you're basically running, like you can think of Emacs as an ELISP machine, a computer in and of itself that just runs ELISP within this thing. Um, and again, I'm also going to assume that you have some Emacs um, basics down. This is, again, not going to be an Emacs tutorial, even though we will uh, cover things there as well. Um, but it, that, it, that employs this ELISP thing, um, just like an old Lisp machine or a machine running forth um, if you want to get to another esoteric language. Now, Emacs itself, um, the program is written, the core, it has this core written in C, which is an ELISP interpreter, and then a lot of the functionality of Emacs is written in ELISP, and we'll see some of that moving on. Some is written in C, um, but a lot in ELISP. So anyway, so this will become more clear as we move along. Um, so actually, just um, as we jump in, one other thing about e, um, ELISP is pretty much everything you're doing is running an ELISP function. So for example, if I hit the J key, it just says, oh, you hit the J key. But if I look at this through help, control H K, which uh, if you look on the bottom of my Emacs window says describe key, and I type K, it says run, it, it, it runs the command self insert command, um, and you'll see right over here, it's in parentheses, this is an ELISP function, uh, or a LISP function, ELISP in particular, and um, that's what's going on. Every little thing you do is running ELISP, which we're going to see in a little bit. So let's first look at a couple of things with the help. Um, one is notice that I don't turn off my menus here. I know a lot of people like to minimize Emacs, but I've got a big monitor, so I've got the real estate, and I kind of like having things like, I never use it, but it's there in case, oh, how do I do that again? And so you can bring up the Emacs tutorial, um, read the Emacs manual, like it, um, you know, etc. Uh, just 
anyway, you can go through this, do the same things that I'm using with the keys, um, but the, basically to bring up the help system, I can do control H, and I can do just control H I to bring up the info pages, and a couple of things we'll refer to later on is this one here with Lisp, so I can navigate to it and hit enter, and this is the Lisp manual, so it's really a reference. You're probably not going to learn eLisp from it, um, but it's all in here. That's another thing we'll talk about as we move along. Uh, a lot of Emacs users are talk, talk about how great, one of the great features of Emacs is that it's all self-documented and everything is in here, and it is, but it's not always the greatest. You know, I appreciate all of the authors and all the contributors putting this together, um, but the truth is, it's really good once you know it. You know, once you are like, oh, this is a great reference to remind me of something I already know, but some of it can be intractable if you're just learning it, so just be aware of that moving ahead, and if you look into some of this and you're saying, oh, how can I make sense of this? It's not you. You know, um, it's not necessarily the best first source. So I'm going to hit the U key to go up. And the other one that's really useful, and this is actually um, a good book here, a really good book, is this Emacs Lisp intro. And you can go ahead, enter to move into it. And you can go through this. And this is a good Lisp tutorial. So if you if you want if you like going through a text-based tutorial and whatever, um, you know, you can stop this video, <laughs> unsubscribe to me and just read this. Um, even though I, I think that what I'm gonna do is gonna complement this. You know, it's not really competing, but I, I did like this. This is what I went through like 20 years ago or something uh, to first learn some ELIS. So we'll, we will be using the help system quick to get out of the info pages um, extensively. So one of the things for ELIS, and if you program in Python or a language like that, is you might know that um, in Python you got a REPL, and we can do that in Emacs. Um, IELM, which is the Interactive Evaluate e Lisp, and I'll just bring this up for now. We're not going to use this much, and we can type in Lisp. It's some e Lisp. So, you know, three is just three, and notice that it shows, you know, an octal hexadecimal. Well, let's do 15. Um, octal hexadecimal, and what the, uh, the, the key is for this, or if I typed in 67, um, you know, that's, you know, that's a different one. Um, 65 is an uppercase A in the ASCII table. 67 is an uppercase C. And it's showing these because this environment is an editor environment. Now, in ELISP, we'll, we will most frequently be using functions. And you might be used to using a function in a language like Python, where you would type print hello. And, um, it's kind of a mathematical type thing where you can type f of some x to run the function f on the input x. Lisp is different, and elisp is different, in that everything is in the parentheses. And so that's going to print and, I guess, return hello. Or instead of doing add 2 and 3, that but you wouldn't do this really in Python, but that's kind of Python or JavaScript desk. You would type plus two, three, and that would give us the five. So that's the first big hurdle people have to overcome is everything is in these parentheses where this is the function and do this function on these things. Now, if you don't know ELIS, but you've configured Emacs, you probably already know some of this because let me bring up my config file. Um, and I do this in a um, literate config using uh, org mode. You'll notice here that these are ELISP functions. So this is an if statement in ELISP. And if you don't follow all of this or understand it, don't worry about it. We'll get to it in future um, videos. This is how we define a function. Um, I don't know, bring use package, which is a very popular way of making, of installing packages. So I'm saying run the use package function. Actually, I believe it's a macro. We'll get to it. On the parameters, Hydra with straight being true. Um, so you've already done 
functions in ELISP if you've configured Emacs. And there's going to be a lot of other stuff. Um, wow, I don't, I don't know what that. <laughs> Just a long list of data. Um, I'm not going to look through this right now. It doesn't matter too much because we can actually dive in for it. So um, I showed you that little REPL, but I kind of glossed over it quickly because the truth is um, I never use it. Because the nice thing is when you're in Emacs, you can type some ELISP and you can run the command. So I'll do escape X, eval last S expression. And you'll see that's over there, control X, control E. And if I run that, oh, right here on the bottom, it gives me a five. 3 plus 3, and it gives me a 6. So I can type in a function and just evaluate it in here, and I don't really have to be in a special environment, which is kind of cool. Um, I happen to be in, a, in, um, in Lisp mode in this buffer, which, because of the way I've set up my own Emacs, does things like it has this you know, autocomplete setup. Again, we will get to that um, a little bit later. Um, now, the cool thing here, so yeah, we could do all this mathy stuff with plus, minus, whatever, but we can actually, we can see a little bit of how Emacs integrates Lisp, how it's all in there. So for example, if you're an Emacs user, you probably load files a lot. So you use control X, control F to load a file. And I'll control G out of this. And I can use the help control H, K, K for um, control H K for help on a key, and then I can type Control X Control F, and you'll see that it says it runs the command find file, um, which is an interactive byte compiled Lisp function from files.el. So find file is written in Elisp, and it says here it's actually running the function find file, and then we give it a file. And we'll see this in a second. But if I hit enter here you'll see that this is the actual ELISP. And again, don't worry about it being, oh my God, it's scary, it's hard. We haven't learned any of this yet, but the cool thing is it's all in here and you can look over it. But we can run the function find file, and why don't we find the file um, homesamansky.emacsd.config.org which I hope is where my or my configuration file is. And I'm going to do that control X, control E again. And bang, it actually loads the file. So I've actually run that function. Whoops. Let's go back to the scratch buffer. I've actually run that function as a little e, e list program. And when we do control X, control F for find file, that's literally what we're doing. And so if when I switch buffers, for example, and let's uh, let's go to help buffer and kill it. Let's go to config.org. I can actually do this, and I'm not going to save this. I'll get do this later. Um, I can say switch to buffer scratch. Control X, Control E, and I've switched to the other buffer. So I'm literally just, you, every time you do a command in Emacs, you're literally running Elis code. And you can do and you can do this in various ways, like, uh, let me actually just get rid of that. Let me just reload this, okay. I, I just didn't want to inadvertently have that floating around so that I could, um, uh, so I might you know, I might save that by mistake. Um, but so, for example, we can do Control X two to split window, and Control X one to get rid of under window, other windows. So we can do the same thing. We can split windows, and we can delete other windows, and it works. And so, by putting these together in a program, um, that's how Elis works. And I, I just want to show you this to show that it's not this mystical, hard programming language. It's just Emacs. It's just what's built into it. And all the things we do, I mean, we can, when we, we want to put text in somewhere, we can insert new text. Now, of course, doing that in this context is kind of 
silly in that it's like, well, I could just type new text. Um, but again, it's just ELISP. So I'm just going to show you a couple other things I find kind of useful. Um, and that'll wrap it up for today. And then our next video, we'll learn how to write functions, how to um, make them interactive from the keyboard, and write our first useful ELISP. Because I showed you that you can use Control X, Control E to run, um, to basically run the previous uh, ELISP expression. And that's great, except you'll notice that it shows me the result on the bottom. And a lot of times I like to actually see the result here. In fact, we'll write something that will replace that plus 3, 3 with the result, and we'll do that in, you know, in a couple of videos. But there's also a val print last s expression, um, which will then print the result underneath. Now, that's not particularly useful for find file, let's say, um, but it is useful for like a little mathy type thing. And um, let's say we wanted to bind this to a key, because that can be useful when you're playing with ELISP. Is, um, so what I actually did is I was going to do this using local set key. And local set key, and the way I'd write this, and you don't have to know And this would set um, this would set up control C Z to be eval print last s expression, which would do what I just showed you. And what I, I thought is like, wait a minute, let me just look at the help for this, because this might be good to show. So if I type control H F for help function, um, I could type in local set key, but if you notice that it brings it up as the first one because my cursor was on it. And if I look at it here, it says this is an interactive list function in suburr.el. Um, and I could hit enter here and look at how it's written. Uh, but it says local set key, key command. But it says this is a legacy function. See key map local set for the recommended function to use instead. And so I hit enter on that and I'm saying, oh, OK. So I should be using key map local set key or key, key, uh, key map local set and then key in command. So what I did is I first wrote key map local set and for key in command, I just did that. I just, oh, I figured it was the same thing. Um, but then when I tried to run it with control XE, it gave me this error and it said, um, essentially like, like control CZ is not a valid key. And I'm like, wait, that's weird because in the help for Let's, can we go up a level? No, we can't. Um, uh, in the help for, let's go back to the help for this. In the help for this, it said key command. Um, and um, in its replacement, it also says key command. And so I figured it was the same, but then it's like, okay, no, I got to go further. And this is one of the instances where the documentation can be inconsistent. Um, it says key is a string that satisfies key valid P. Um, and I'll come to that in a minute, but then there's, let's just see, but there's not a whole lot else here. And this is one of the things I find lacking in the documentation. Um, it doesn't have specific examples. And so unless you already know what everything is, you're not going to know how to do things. But fortunately, I decided, let's follow this one. So I hit Enter here. And it had these examples. See, so this one, had, this page had examples. So I'm oh, OK, I can just give it the string with Control-C-Z. So I just need to give it this. That should work. So I'll do Control-X-E. Notice in the bottom, it says eval print, last S expression, it evaluated the thing. And so now, if I type control, well, not control Z, but control CZ, it runs the function I've set. So we've gone on about 19 minutes, which is probably longer than I should have for just this random ramblings about Z, um, about ELISP. So that'll be it for now. This is just a little bit of a teaser, shows you a little bit of how things work. But in the next video, we're going to be a little bit more systematic. How do we create our own ELISP function? How do we call it? How do we run it as an interactive command? And then we'll use that as a platform to start building some useful things. All right, so uh, enjoy.